I work at a state park, and we see some pretty interesting things here. This is one of them. Buffalo River State Park is fairly remote, located near the Ozark Mountains. We get lots of campers here, especially come the summer season, but only few stay all year round. We see lots of deer, wild turkey, and even the occasional wild bear or mountain lion. We also get reports from visitors about their sightings, but never give them too much attention. Despite their enthusiasm, most of these sightings are probably overrated. This changed in one particular episode, when a visitor caught something on his trail camera. The video was different from the others. The video shows a humanoid figure walking through the woods at night. The illumination of the video makes it look like somebody lit up a light. And the most disturbing thing about it is the size of the creature seems bigger than a human. The trail camera was quite up high, so most people doubted its authenticity. It was also placed several feet away from a creek, making it unclear if the figure actually stepped out of it or not. The visitor who sent us this video also reported a strange noise he heard at night. He described it as an elongated sort of noise. Like this elongated hissing sound, or akin to something like that of a goose. I didn't think anything of it until a few months passed. We got another report from one of our park rangers. We'll call her Ranger Kim. She has been working in our park for well over 20 years. She knows the trails around here like the back of her hand. She was out on patrol and she heard something that made her stop in her tracks. She claims the sound she heard was like a group of people, all hissing in unison, like steam escaping under pressure, but on a very large scale. She described it as a hissing sound, but with a very elongated quality to it. That's how she described it. If it wasn't just one person, she said it was coming from multiple sources, and said it was coming from right around the creek. She had also found footprints in the mud, footprints larger, far larger than any human. She was not sure what they belonged to, but her findings very much so disturbed her, as they would any ranger. This led us to believe that whatever this thing was, it seemed to have a connection with the creek, because all these sounds and sightings all kept rotating around the creek area. Other witnesses and other people who had reported sounds and strange things they witnessed also had reported things all down by the creek. While we still haven't found a source of where these noises are coming from exactly, we have a few theories. It's very possible that we are dealing with one very larger than live alligator. However, there's one major problem with all that speculation. These tracks that Kim found were bipedal, meaning, unlike a typical alligator that is clearly quadrupedal, bipedal means two legs. The only things that are bipedal are humans and or monkeys or apes. That is what really disturbs both of us. We've decided to keep our ears open should we get another report of the same creature, or anything else strange. Until then... Best of luck to all of you. I'll be sticking around to answer any questions. My sighting story dates back when I was interning in 2009 to 2010 for the New Jersey Park Forestry Service. I was fresh out of college and had only worked in national parks that were relatively close to home for a very short amount of time. My job here was conducting trail maintenance and the like in various state parks, all throughout South Jersey. I'd finished my work one Saturday night, was heading back to the office for the night when my supervisor called me up on the radio. As I was sitting there, waiting for him to respond, I heard rustling off to my right. I thought it was maybe someone else or another animal. But then, the rustling sounded louder, like it was coming in my direction, which naturally drew my attention. So then I began to speculate well, it is dark, so it's probably a deer. I stood still and watched as a large shadow figure emerged from the tree line. Now, what I saw terrified me. From what I can best recall, it looked like a large humanoid. I mean, it was covered in hair. It looked kind of like a gorilla, in the sense that it stood upright. But there were wings on its back, and a very lizard-like tail. It stood roughly seven feet tall, covered in thick hair from head to toe. After about ten seconds of watching it just standing there, I lost it. 
I began screaming at the top of my lungs, running back down the trail, the entire two miles away. When I got back to my HQ, my supervisor had asked me what had happened. I told him everything, and he just told me not to tell anybody. They would think I was crazy, or possibly take me off the job. I've done my best to keep my mouth shut for almost four years now, but I finally feel as if time has alleviated enough of the burden on my shoulders. It's time to tell people about what's going on. The boss could tell that there was fear in my voice. I was not going to lie about what had happened. Even several other rangers had stepped forward, confirmed they too had heard screams. Long before I even had my sighting that night, meaning that they believed that this thing that I saw was the source behind the noise. Although, I could attest that I never heard any of the screaming before, just saw the figure. But the other rangers were spooked too, although they'll never speak up on it. I was sent up to Thetis Lake, Canada, for a project that I was contracted out for. I was to be up there for about a year. The first two weeks, nothing really happened, other than a ton of mosquito bites. On one of the nights afterwards, I was walking back to my campsite. It had gotten dark out, so the only thing lighting up the path was my headlamp. It wasn't really all that bright, but it was more than enough to see in front of me. As I was walking, my light flickered, not faded out completely like it would have had I accidentally bumped it. This wasn't an overly common occurrence with my headlamp, since it had a habit of breaking and going out all the time. So, I was about three quarters of a mile away, and I just passed the hill on my right, and I see some movement in the water out by the lake. Whatever it was, was actually coming up out of the lake. As it was coming up out of the water, I realized exactly what this was. A monster. As soon as I saw this thing's face, I froze up. I couldn't move, but I could still see the movements. It had moved out of the water onto land, and kind of had this drunken stagger to it. That's when I saw it in full for the first time, even though it was very brief, and the lighting wasn't the best. This thing was hideous. I've seen some pretty scary stuff in my life, but nothing can ever scare me as much as seeing this did. It was maybe six feet tall. Maybe. It moved pretty well for being bipedal. It kind of reminded me of Frankenstein, because its movements were stiff and staggered. Its skin was also a bright blue, and also dark green in places, and was more slimy than scaly. Its face was human-like, and had small beady eyes. This thing was amphibious and evil-looking. That's the only way I can accurately describe the expression it was wearing. Seeing this thing felt like everything went into slow motion. I think it took about five seconds for me to realize that I needed to get out of here now. So I started walking backward very slowly until I had my back to its side, to where it could not see me. There's no telling what it would do if it did see me. This thing could be the one and only Thetis Lake monster that I was seeing. Something I'd heard lots of folklore and legends about, but I always just assumed it was an urban myth. Little did I know. This was actually a real living creature. I could not turn around and run. I feared it would hear me. Even more scary is that if it ran, there's no telling if this thing would come after me. So I turned around very slowly and walked the same way I came, paying very close attention to my own footfalls to make sure I was being as quiet as possible as this thing just disappeared off into the woods. Fortunately, it did not look off in my direction and seemed distracted by going wherever it was. I got back to my campsite in record time. As soon as this creature completely disappeared into the woodline, I didn't waste any time running as fast as I could back to my post. I got back and told them what happened, but I tried to be as vague as possible in fear of retribution against my career. Not surprising, but didn't take me seriously, even though I didn't exactly hint at what I saw. I explained to them that I saw something large that terrified me, and they just kind of rolled their eyes at me and told me to get it together. I did not sleep well that night. I stayed up thinking about it. I still don't know what to think about the experience. I do know that it was real. This is not some sort of hoax or anything of that sort. 
it was real and still scares me to this day. It wasn't until after the sighting that I would even learn about the Thetzis Lake monster. I was curious to find out what it is I saw, and maybe there's any correlation to what I saw and the settings nearby. Sure enough, there's not many settings out there, but there are a few, and I can't believe that I'm one of the few who've seen this thing. For several years, I worked as a government contractor, contracted by the Forest Service. I was stationed at the time out in Flagstaff, Arizona, so I spent a lot of my time hiking down in the Grand Canyon. One night, at about four in the morning, I was heading to the ranger station in the village of Supai, the only place you can stay overnight in the canyon. I was hiking about seven miles down where I would have to cut through territory. It was just beginning to get light out, but... Due to the elevation, it was quite chilly. That's when I noticed at the top of the hill before you enter, something was moving in the bushes. At first, I thought it was a bobcat, and I approached it slowly to get a closer look. I noticed this animal had two large ears, way too long of a tail, and covered in some type of fur I could not identify. It had the body shape of a bobcat, but with the head of, I don't know... I couldn't tell what it was at first. Its face was turned away from me. All I could see was the side of its face, and that's when I noticed something very strange. It looked like a cross between the face of a bobcat and kind of more of a lion, or maybe a hyena. Its eyes were a bright green, and the body was covered in very thick fur that reminded me of thorns. Its front legs also looked different. Its front paws were not really paws, but more like hands. It was hunched over in a strange way like it was digging for something. I froze there for a minute trying to figure out what I was looking at, and it turned around to look at me. Did I see the elusive cactus cat that I'd heard so much about? A cryptid that is seen all around Arizona. My heart began beating out of my chest. For a minute, I thought about running away, but it only took one look into those eyes to realize this thing was not that aggressive at all. So I slowly approached it, moving my hand towards it. The thing looked at me, with what I can only assume to be fear or curiosity. It did seem harmless enough, and as I got within maybe eight, seven feet of it, it turned around and shot down. Right down the hill, this thing had quickly disappeared, bolting up down the hill, as if something much bigger had spooked it. I was still in total and complete awe of what I'd just seen. Maybe it was just spooked by a snake or something so I continued on my way to the ranger station. About 20 minutes later, I got there, got in for my shift, never mentioned it to anybody. I thought they would think I was crazy. In fact, this is the first time I'm even sitting down telling my story, just because it's so bizarre. It wasn't really scary, but it definitely caught me off guard more than anything else. I was not expecting this to happen. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in person. To anybody out there living in the southwestern portion of the United States, have you ever heard of this elusive cat? And if you do, do you know of anybody who's ever seen one? Before this sighting, I'd only ever heard of it briefly, which is why I'm still kind of shocked at the fact that I even saw it. A former ranger here. I used to work alone near the outside of Big Bend National Park here in Texas State. It can be pretty secluded in certain areas. During my time, I can't even begin to tell you how many strange things I saw or heard, but this is one encounter that is still very fresh in my mind. Now, before I go on, I have heard and seen all sorts of incredibly creepy things. I've had my own skinwalker sightings, a Bigfoot sighting. There's lots of things out there that go bump in the night that many refuse to talk about. If you meet the right people... They are usually willing to open up and speak about it, but you have to be careful. Especially when it involves in your line of work. It can definitely affect your career and how you are viewed as a professional. If you're perceived as crazy or being a nut, good luck getting hired anywhere or advancing your career. Especially if you tell people that you saw a skinwalker or a Bigfoot. This night, though, something happened that I never thought possible. My work partner, another ranger both of us were on duty. We were both driving back from the station 
when we heard something very odd. It sounded like a woman's scream mixed with the sound of weeping. It was loud, a shrill, lasting only a few seconds. The more I think about it, the more my skin crawls. We did not see anything out of the ordinary, just heard the sound. The next day when we checked on our equipment, one of the cameras was not functioning properly. It recorded the sounds that we had heard but did not capture any kind of visual. Two weeks later, I heard the same sound while I was patrolling out right around three in the morning. It was unusually dark. When I heard the sound, it instantly sent a chill down my spine and the immediate feeling of fear gripped me. It was so real and so incredibly bizarre. I thought, what was that? It sounded like it came from a woman, but not. I was alone this time, and I certainly didn't want to be. Not after hearing that. But the only thing I could do was call for backup. At that hour, I would have brought the fear of God to anybody who came out there with me. It sounded like somebody screaming. I mean, I'm not crazy. I know what I'd heard. I just can't explain it. I'm here to tell you that many people would write this off and just say, Oh, you heard a mountain lion. That's not what this sounded like. I've heard mountain lion and cougar on multiple occasions, and while they can sound like a woman screaming bloody murder, that's not what this sounded like. The tone was audibly deeper and it just sounded different. I obviously wouldn't have been so terrified if it had sounded exactly like that of a cougar. Now, this would happen again for the few following nights each and every time. It would make my skin literally crawl. After what I believed to be about three weeks after the initial audible noises that I first heard, my partner and I were working together again, patrolling at the same area at the same time. We both see movement off from the distance in the same direction that we'd heard the screams the first few times. My partner was actually the first one to see it and point out the dark figure moving in the distance. I had to squint my eyes and realize that what we are seeing is a creature moving with its mouth wide open, as though it was screaming. We watched it as it moved very quickly through the desert underbrush. The movement from this creature was as if it had glided towards the underbrush, and not typically run like a quadrupedal animal would. The only reason why we didn't immediately panic was because what we were seeing was just so outrageously bizarre that for the first few seconds... We couldn't handle what we were seeing. Neither of us screamed, and we didn't run, like it was some kind of monster or ghost. But we did eventually hightail it out of there. I think we were just so shocked and stunned. I'm not saying that I know what this creature is, what we saw out there, in Big Bend National Park. But, judging by its physical appearance, it reminded me of what many people claim to be a ghoul. Ghouls are similar to crawlers or rakes, and that they are all white and have very wide open mouths. I only know these things because I decided to do a little bit of research into cryptozoology after the sighting, to try and educate myself on what it is that I saw. The main reason being, I wanted to know if these things are dangerous, or pose a threat from everything I've read. And they definitely do. I can't prove it was a ghoul, but based off everything that I saw and experienced, things all point to that. I don't want to just write this off as nothing, because nothing will never terrify me as personally as this did. I've been having nightmares about it pretty much non-stop. I figured sharing my experience with the world is probably the best thing I can do. After all, this is not something that you hear about every day, but I know I did not want to go back there. I'm planning on making an official report eventually to the National Park Service, but we wanted to get more information out there from users. This is one of the many things that has happened over the course of my career. Feel free to ask questions. I understand that a story like this could probably come off as not believable, which is one of the reasons why I have never told anybody about it for quite a long time. With the entire world and the state that it is in, I figure now it's probably a better time to do this to get my story out there. Now, for a little information on myself, I'm 30. I've been an active duty park ranger for the past six and a half years in one of America's national parks. Before that, I served four years in the U.S. Marine Corps. During my tenure in both, I held numerous security clearances, received extensive training on protecting sensitive information, 
and have done work with various different federal agencies, NSA and DHS, to name a couple. Those are just the outliers of things I've done and people I've worked with, but by no means do I consider it a bragging right. Basically, what I'm saying is I know how to keep my mouth shut about sensitive information when necessary. So, consider the fact that if there was a chance of somebody believing me, or the story getting out in public, it would have happened by now, I'm sure. Now, let's get to the meat and potatoes. About five years ago, I was a very young ranger in one of our national parks, a park in which I will not name. It's a very popular place for hikers and campers. I was not a full-fledged ranger at this time, so my duties were pretty much relegated to being a rover, patrolling the trails and checking up on campsites. I was not an intern, but more so an assistant, if you will. I would shadow and assist many of the rangers while on duty, and do a plethora of different forms of work, including but not limited to search and rescue as well. In addition to that, it was my task to do safety briefings when tours from the visitor centers would bring folks in, where I was assigned. At this point, it should be noted that most of my coworkers at this early stage of my career were much older than I, by double or triple. In their defense, though, they'd been doing the job for probably 15 plus years while I still only had a few. I'm not trying to whine about this, just saying that it played a role in how things played out later on. One morning during the summer season, I was asked to do these safety briefings for a group of visitors who'd been touring the area that I was assigned that day. The briefing itself wasn't anything special, and everything went smooth enough. They listened up and had all their questions answered. After the tour was over, I went back to my usual trail and continued on with what I needed to do. The trail was not anything too special. Just yet another trail that looped around the base of the mountain that led off into some woods. A couple other trails were branching off of it, but it was pretty unnoticeable unless you were looking for them specifically. A few hours later, I finished up all my other tasks and decided to take a nice break on one of our overlook points. It's kind of like an observation deck, if you will. It was nice. It had a shade covering over half of it, which made sitting a very comfortable thing. So anyway, after sitting down, I noticed behind me in the distance somebody coming down the trail. I did not pay much attention to it. As long as they don't come near me, we coexist just fine. Now, as they got closer and closer, I realized that this person is wearing all black and has a hood over their head. Normally, past the halfway point of my break. This wouldn't be anything special, but what really made me sit up and take notice was that this person had a very strange gait to them, almost as if they were floating on the ground. No problems with breathing or tiredness in their legs or anything like that. They were kind of robotic in their precision and execution. I only had my awareness at half capacity because of my break, so I wasn't really paying attention. But the closer they got, about 10 feet away, I tried to make small talk with them. They said nothing back, but their head turned slowly towards me. It took a few seconds for this whole exchange to happen, but when it did, this figure looked straight down at me, since I was sitting, and kept walking forward without missing a beat. I was horrified when I got a look at their face. It was like staring into the face of Emperor Palpatine, deformed and gray-looking. It was terrifying. Even the eyes looked unnatural, but they just kept on going and going. And that is what really made me notice their movements. It all just looked so wrong. I pulled my head away for a second to grab my radio. When I looked back up, they were suddenly gone. I remember sitting there just thinking to myself, Okay? There was no way they could have disappeared so fast. There's nowhere on or off the trail that they could go to fully conceal themselves. Not like that. To make a long story short, I got the creeps and decided to get out of there. Originally, I was going to radio back about this person, but decided against it. The whole thing was so weird that I could not shake it off. So, now you're probably wondering, why am I sharing this? Well, because two days after this happened, another ranger came up to me and told me about an experience he had while patrolling an area near where I was at. He also got weirded out by my story, too. Apparently, they found a dead deer on the side of the trails. When they approached the body, this deer had all of its organs and blood completely removed out of its body. 
the deer had not been cut open. There were no signs of flies or any sort of decay, even though this deer had been dead for well over 12 hours. There were no bite marks, puncture wounds, or anything that would indicate this being cut open in any way, shape, or form. It was as if somebody had killed this deer and just dumped it here in the trail. Upon closer examination, they could not find either the cause of death or how this deer died. It's as if it had just suddenly fell over and died. But yet, its eyes, tongue, heart, lungs, and other organs were all missing. There were also no tracks or any sign of a struggle when they found the deer. So, I guess the real reason I'm sharing this is because I want to know what you guys think about it. If any of you have had any experiences like mine, or if you have also heard about weird things happening in the area, I would love to know. Thank you for reading my post. Feel free to discuss these events further. Born and raised in Australia, had been a ranger in the Northern Territory for almost two years. The job of a park ranger here is very different from what you people out there might think it is. We're not worrying and talking about the same little cute red-coated individual who keeps an eye out for litter bugs or makes sure that people don't leave their garbage behind. We actually get off our butts and go into the woods, make sure nobody gets lost, hurt, or eaten by any of the dangerous animals that are indigenous to this area of the world. I've seen my fair share of Australian wildlife on the job, so I know from experience when something is not right about an animal encounter. It was a very hot summer night, back in 2004, while patrolling. The Kakadu National Park, when I first encountered the Bruin Jor. For those who are out of the loop, this is what it looked like. I just finished patrolling around one particular area, and was getting ready to head back to my car, so I could drive to the next one, and I heard a noise in the distance. At first, it started off as just little bits of noise, but the sound grew tremendously, so I finally took a look over my shoulder and saw this. A huge bipedal animal, about 20 feet in length, and was slowly walking through the brush with its high set tail swinging back and forth like a metronome. It had small nubby claws on its front legs, and its front quarters were covered in dark red feathers merging down into black downy ones toward the end of its body. And I thought to myself, Dear God, what am I looking at? This animal looked like a living dinosaur from all the cryptozoology books I've ever read. This sighting did not last long, however. It quickly moved past me, and its tail was the last thing I saw going off into the bush. However, it left me in a state of shock for a long time after, I then did some research online to see if anybody else had reported seeing anything similar like this. However, only a few other stories ever surfaced about a similar animal being spotted by others here in Australia. Also, earlier Aboriginal accounts suggest that it is a reptilian animal of some kind, although I'm not exactly sure what it is. It looked prehistoric, that's for sure. I am currently an active duty army ranger, working in the southern United States. I have been on countless deployments to Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, among other countries. I have seen things that I can't even begin to count or explain because of how insane they are. So, about four months ago, while I was back home for a weekend visit at my family's cabin in South Carolina, back in 2006, I saw something happen that still haunts me to this day. All of this was too much for me to bear, so please, help me through it. When I was out in my family's cabin one Sunday afternoon, I decided to go jogging through my usual trail that I do back home. Since it was a cold and cloudy day in February, not many people were out here on the trail like they usually would be. As I ran along, I noticed there was something in the distance towards my left side. When me and this thing got about a hundred yards away from each other, I stopped at an opening in the trail with dense foliage, or should I say dead foliage, considering it was in the middle of winter. The creature was bigger than any known bird in existence. Some say it is called a thunderbird. It had snow white feathers with black tipped wings. It spanned roughly 25 feet across and had very long legs that looked similar to an ostrich's. They kind of hung down, this thing was about 50 yards away from me and moving in very fast. 
I decided to run, not knowing exactly what was coming my way, completely scared out of my mind. I made it back in record time to the cabin, thinking I had just seen a darn dragon, but it was easily the largest bird I'd ever come to know in my entire life. Now, I have some speculation on this. Back when I was in high school, when I would go hunting, there were rumors about these cases of animal mutilations occurring around local forests and national parks. There was this one case where a group of hunters went out camping and hunting in the woods for weeks at a time. The story goes they saw something so frightening, so terrifying, and so unreal to them that watching these animals get ripped apart by some kind of beast with huge claws and wings all throughout the three nights scared them. Supposedly, the ranger found their campsite, interviewed all three of them, but there was no public information that was released. I know it sounds like a horror movie scenario, but I've heard many accounts from locals who still live around me since I was young, saying they see giant birds flying around sunset and dawn, only to see them disappear. These same birds are responsible for missing adults, children, and even livestock being killed. I believe they're what's known as a thunderbird. I'm not sure if it's related, but there was one account where a guy saw what he thought was an eagle or a hawk until it became much closer, and he was able to see just how large this bird was. He realized the wingspan was well over 20 feet, and this bird was of colossal size. Terrified upon the sighting, the man fled in fear. It just makes me believe that what I saw is in fact the mysterious Thunderbird that the others have talked about seeing. It is common in Native American lore and legend, even among the natives. As a young boy, I always had an interest in the outdoors. I would spend weekends at my grandparents' house, fishing in their pond or hunting for rabbits and foxes in their woods. Grandpa was a retired veteran, so he taught me how to shoot when I turned eight years old. He taught me about self-defense with firearms, so if I ever needed one, I could protect myself on my family until help had arrived. My mother worked long hours as a nurse, so she was not around much to take care of us kids, but she still did her best to teach us right from wrong. She took us out during the weekdays occasionally, but it was just Grandma watching over us while Mom worked all day and night. Mom didn't like that we were playing with guns, and we were not allowed to play outside when she wasn't home. I would sneak out of the house at night sometimes and play in the woods with my gun. But if Mom caught me with my BB gun, she would ground me for a week or two. Grandpa moved away after Grandma died. She had cancer. Mom sold the land to some developers and built a new house on an acre of land nearby, leaving us more room to run around without getting into too much trouble. I was now 15 years old, no longer just a little boy, but not quite a teenager yet. I still enjoyed going for walks in the woods, climbing trees or cracking rocks down by the creek that ran through our property line. I always kept my BB gun close by, carrying it with me on walks, and I took care of it like it was a real firearm. If the barrel ever got dirty, or if the stock needed to be tightened up, I would take it all apart and clean everything, then reassemble everything back together. One morning during springtime, I woke up early and decided to go for a walk before school began. It was cloudy and looked like rain, but that did not stop me from going out anyway. I walked through the woods towards our old pond behind our house. I noticed two older boys standing across the creek from me, pointing at something in the water. As soon as they saw me, they darted off into the brush so fast that you would not have been able to catch them. I thought they were just up to no good, sneaking around in the woods so early before school started and it gave me a bad feeling. I kept walking towards our old pond, but as soon as I got closer, that same uneasy feeling got worse. Something was wrong. Something had happened here at the pond that morning, and these boys knew what it was. I walked up to the edge of the creek and crossed over, dropping my backpack in a rock before wading through knee-deep water towards where they were standing. As soon as I rounded a corner, I saw it. A large hairy body laying face down in the grass with its arms outstretched as if somebody had moved it over in the dirt and then ran off. The body was facing away from me, so I could not see any of the details, but it did look human-like at first glance. So I walked around to the other side 
and gaped in horror when I saw its face, twisted and mangled beyond belief, with one eye missing, and large chunks of flesh ripped off its face crudely, leaving bloody exposed teeth and nostrils above splintered pieces of flesh, destroyed bone where skin should have been. It was not moving at all, and only laying there motionless in the dirt, while steam slowly rose from hot patches of congealed blood. I turned around quickly, tripping over my feet, trying to get away from it as I ran as fast as my legs could carry me all the way home. I burst through the front door, out of breath and panicked. My mom looked at me puzzled. Heather, she said calmly, what happened? Your shirt's ripped, and why are you wet? I had tried to catch my breath, but could not talk, only panting heavily while I stared into her curious eyes and tried to decide if I should tell her what had just happened or pretend it never did. Did something happen in the woods today? She had asked again, but this time her voice was stern with a hint of disappointment. You know you aren't supposed to go beyond our property line without permission from either me or your father. Now tell me what you saw out there that got you so worked up and makes you look like you got into a fight. I almost told her right there and then about how I saw this gruesome creature that looked half-human with mangled teeth and a shredded face. But for some reason, I hesitated, looking down at my shaking hands while trying to think of what to say next. The words slowly began spilling out from my mind. I don't know, I said quietly. There was just something really weird out in the woods today, kind of creepy, actually. It was like this big hairy gorilla thing laying dead in the grass near our old pond. What do you mean, dead? she asked, furrowing her brows. Did you hit it with your BB gun? Did you kill an animal? I don't think so, I replied, nervously. He was lying on the ground facing away from me, but his face was all messed up and there's blood everywhere. It looked like somebody had ripped off half his head with their hands and at that moment, she shot up straight in her chair, suddenly slamming her fist on the table, making me jump out of my skin. She sounded more angry than worried when she suddenly started yelling at me for going in the woods by myself without permission and scaring her half to death. I tried pleading with her and I didn't see or hit anything, but it did not work. She wasn't having any of it. She wouldn't even let me change out of my dirty clothes before sending me to my room and grounding me for a month. I didn't get any dinner that night either. She must have been really mad at me to do that. It was so unfair. I hadn't done anything wrong, yet she couldn't even let it go, and it gave me the silent treatment all night long, while making me sit in my room without telling her why I did what I did. I can still remember how much I cried myself to sleep that night, after going to bed hungry, wondering why she's doing this to me, instead of comforting me and listening when I tried telling her about what happened. That memory remains strong in my head, even to this day, even though it happened many years ago when I was just a kid. That memory is somehow still very clear. When I was 15, we were camping just outside of Yosemite National Park. We fell asleep in an old car camping space. Near midnight, the forest started to come alive with that crackling sound, like a bullhorn. We woke up and looked around but saw nothing, so we tried to go back to sleep. The noise continued to get louder and closer until it was right outside our tent. It stopped for about 15 minutes before making the noise again, this time much softer and not loud. But after being woken up again by a sound outside of our tent, I was terrified outside of my wits. I remember thinking, if this is Bigfoot, he's about to crash into our tent and rip us to pieces. About 20 minutes later, the noises had still been going on, but now there's this awful scream that sounded like it came from a bear, but yet had the cadence of a human scream. It sounded as if it came from either behind or next to our tent, but there were no animals around that could have made the sound. I can't really describe it. If you heard it, you would know what I mean. After another 20 minutes or so of creeping around outside of our tent, quietly rustling leaves and making growling noises, like two bears were mating or something, it slowly went away. We went back to sleep until morning. We somehow slept, I know, a miracle, right? Well, when morning came, 
my friend who woke up before found some weird footprints by our car. They looked human, but they only had three toes in the prints, and these feet were humongous. They also appeared to be in twos, the same way you and I stand up. It was creepy. We went back to the ranger station and reported it. The guy told us, in kind of a hushed tone, that there's supposedly Bigfoot activity in the area, but it kind of gave us a wink, like he didn't really believe what we had to say. And I think he kind of smirked and smiled. Again, totally thinking the whole thing was a joke. I don't think my friend believed us either. He didn't say a word for a week after that night, even though he's the one that showed me the prints. But every time I tried to talk about it, he would just shut down and say, yeah, that didn't happen. So maybe denial? I don't know what. We later on got to talking about it and it opened up to a much more serious conversation. We both know something weird happened that night, but what came to visit us outside of our tent? I'm not sure. In 2005, I transferred to work in Buffalo National River area. I was excited for this transfer and getting to see the side of the Ozark Mountains that I had not seen. When it came time to move, my wife and I packed our U-Haul, headed west along Highway 65 through Jasper towards Boxley Valley. It was late October. We were driving at night when we decided to stop at one of the campgrounds in Boxley Valley for the night. This is where it all began. As we hit the road, dark clouds rolled in from the west, obscuring what little light there was from the evening. We worried about the rain, though, since nothing had been forecasted for days, and we were fine. Driving down an old dirt road, we noticed this strange smell. It wasn't something that smelt like dust or smoke or dead animal or urine or blood, but it almost had this metallic-y kind of sweet smell. My wife pointed out the smell to me as I drove along at about 20 miles an hour. There were no other vehicles on the road with me, and the strange smell appeared to get stronger for a moment and then seemed to fade away, only to return again much stronger. This kept happening as we passed through Boxley Valley all the way up until we went over the hump in the mountain and began descending down towards Ponca, where our campsite was at Buffalo Point. This is when things started to get really strange. As we headed down the pass towards Ponca, I noticed what looked like some sort of large animal up ahead. It looked like it was either chasing something or running from something. Not sure which, since it did not appear to be moving in a straight line. I slowed down as we approached what appeared to be an animal, and all of a sudden, it bolted right across our path, probably no more than 50 feet away. The thing that crossed our path was dark brown with shaggy hair. Its body was thick and stocky, its legs short and stout looking. The head was large for its body size and had two long pointed horns coming out of the top of its head. What really struck out to me, as weird, about this creature is it didn't appear to have ears. Nor could we really see any eyes on it, at least not under all that hair. This thing was huge, at least 700 pounds if not more. It crossed our path and just kept running down into a gully where we lost sight of it. We both sat there in shock for about 10 minutes before we decided to slowly drive onto our campsite. I pulled out my four-wheel drive pickup and headed down towards Ponca with my wife. The only lights available were street lights, so I couldn't tell much more about the creature except that it was large, fast, and shaggy with the horns. The next day, I called the ranger's station at Buffalo Point Campground and told them my sighting. The ranger on duty said he would come by in a while and talk to me about it. He showed up later on with the game warden in tow, who also heard my story. They even had me sign some papers, saying that I saw something that should not be disclosed publicly. Very weird. They did inform me too they got calls around this time of year, a lot, reporting of seeing something very similar. But also, running alongside Highway 65, right past Devil's Den State Park, close to Ponca, I never got any calls or reports back of what this creature was. But I tried contacting the park service again years later for more info, but never received anything back. So there you have it. This is my experience with the Ozark Howler, an unknown cryptid running through the Arkansas forested foothills late at night. I was working up in the Pacific Northwest in 1991 
for a portion of time. The Northwest is a beautiful place to stay, live and work, even outside the Seattle area. Washington is a wonderful state. In my story details of sighting I had when I was hard at work one day with a being or creature that I still cannot explain. My work day started like most others. I was driving to the job site. On this particular day, we were building a new road up in the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. This is in Washington State. It was not my first time working up there. I had been assigned to go there for three or four one-week rotations over my year-long tour of duty. We had just finished making up some progress on new roads that week, and after a good day of work, we proudly left everything behind us and decided to call it a night. Heading back into town for dinner and a good night of sleep at an old motel we'd grown accustomed to. We all took turns leaving. Four or five of us would head to town, while a couple of the other guys stayed behind to take care of the equipment and tools. This would rotate from day to day. I was driving out that night in one of our old equipment trucks, and I noticed something on the other side of the road, just up ahead. I wasn't sure what it was at first, because I could only see its silhouette from my distance. However, as I approached closer to the figure, I got a better look at this strange being or creature. It turned around and faced me while continuing its slow stroll across the dirt path, using a full moon's light to make comparison. The thing stood maybe three feet taller than me. I'm 6'2", had very dark complexion, a heavy coating all over. I didn't see any eyes or anything else that could make sense of its face, but it had a very large mouth with huge fangs. As my truck got closer to this thing, it then turned sideways and kind of stood there looking off in my direction. My initial reaction was to panic. Of course, I slowed down as I approached this tall figure, but knew not to stop because the road we were laying down was too narrow. So I very slowly passed by him once I got about 50 feet past where it was standing. My curiosity got the best of me, and I stopped my truck. It took a couple of seconds for me to turn around in my seat and take another look, but this thing was now gone when I tried to take a second glance. It just disappeared without a trace. I should have probably gone back up there a few days later to see what it was. I'm making this post because I figured it would be interesting to hear what you all have to say about this experience. That's basically my story in a nutshell. I don't think it was Bigfoot. Bigfoots actually have a face and a more cone-shaped head and a lot of hair, judging from what I read from so many other eyewitness accounts. This, however, looked very alien. While it was covered in hair, again, I didn't see a nose or eyes, just a huge, large, gaping mouth that took over its entire... where its face should be. I worked for a short time as a forest ranger, although I'm no longer in that field of work. This was my first and only posting as a ranger, even though I worked in many areas of the profession. The whole experience was odd and uncomfortable, and ended rather abruptly. I won't name my exact location or say how long ago it was. I don't want to get any previous flack from former supervisors for divulging into confidential information. To satisfy your curiosity, Reddit, We'll just call this area West Virginia. I had been stationed at this particular place for about three months when something happened early one morning that shocked me. So much so that to this day, I don't think I could ever work in the forest industry again without starting to break down sobbing. Here's what happened. I was to work from 4 a.m. until noon that day and only had a few small fires to deal with. So I wasn't all worn out or anything yet when I decided to stop at one of my back road crossings we used as a shortcut. I got out of my truck and stretched, looking up at the stars before packing it back and heading off again into the woods. Almost as soon as I started driving again, something caught my attention off this semi-large hill near where I had parked. There were no houses for miles, just rolling hills and trees as far as the eye could see. For some reason, though, there was this light shining through the trees and it caught my attention. They were far enough off the road and I couldn't see what was causing this. So I got out of the truck and walked up to investigate. It had this loud, strange noise accompanying it. And this bright ball of light shining through the treetops, illuminating the entire ground by at least 40 feet or so all around. I thought it might be somebody using some sort of industrial strength spotlight to look for deer. 
We had problems with poachers in these parts as often as once a week. But as I drew closer, I could tell that something just wasn't right. The closer I'd got to whatever it was, the more intense that horrible sound became until suddenly everything stopped dead silent and I entered the small clearing on the other side of a few large trees. There was this thing in front of me, just under one of those pine trees. But it wasn't human and darn sure wasn't dressed like no poacher. It looked reptilian to say the least, standing on two legs and had arms and hands with opposable thumbs. All I could think was it could safely describe it as bipedal. Its eyes were large and yellow. Even amber, depending on how much light was shining off of them at that moment, it seemed to be barely any at all, and they contracted immediately upon me seeing them standing there, staring back at me with my mouth hanging wide open. The thing was also built like Arnold Schwarzenegger in its prime. It was at least six foot five. Its fingers were almost as long as my forearms. The scariest thing about it, though, was in the fact that I could see everything on it, but it was more the fact that it looked like something out of a horror movie. It was also covered with small bony protrusions along the neck, about an inch high, all the way down both legs, until it ended near some clawed feet. Its neck was short for its body mass, but I think it did not halt its movements whatsoever. This thing looked like a lean killing machine and could have taken me out if it so wanted. This thing straight up resembled some of the scariest creatures I've ever seen in any sci-fi film, and I'm not ashamed to admit that by the time I left the forest that night, I had needed a new pair of pants. So it stood there, staring off in my direction, but I don't think it noticed me directly. At least, I don't think it did. It decided to take off, to who knows where. It disappeared in a blur, faster than I even saw it in the first place. I literally cannot recount this story without breaking down. I am sorry if this is lacking good detail or good grammar, or if none of it makes sense. I am a terrible storyteller, but I could tell you that when it disappeared, my immediate reaction was to run as fast as I could towards my truck, without ever looking back over my shoulder even once. There is not a single time I have ever told anybody about this where they didn't do one of these three things. Laugh stare at me like I was crazy, or flat out accuse me of lying. Easily, one of the most terrifying experiences I had, being a backcountry park ranger, was dealing with what people refer to as shadow people. It was in the spring of 97. I was working for the federal government. My duties consisted of being the only law enforcement officer in a small national park near Lake Tahoe. The majority of my time there was spent in solitude, patrolling by vehicle, boat or on foot, looking for campers who overstayed their welcome, finding lost fishermen or people who got turned around, hiking in the woods. Shadow men are often reported to be seen at night when they have encounters with them. They are described as being tall figures that stand very still, usually in doorways or passageways when encountered by the witness. The first encounter I had with one was actually when I was walking along a trail that was far from off any campsite or place any human could be. It was probably close to three in the morning. My location was along the edge of a heavily forested part of our park, bordering on a private property owned by a hunting club. It's very rugged, mountainous, a terrain covered with lots of pine trees and oak, extremely steep inclines leading up to high elevation mountain peaks that tower above the tree line. This particular area of this park is a notorious hotspot for Bigfoot activity, and although I never saw one there, I've spoken with other staff members who have. I can remember walking along that trail in the night, with my light, shining it all around me, as I walked around looking down at the ground where my feet were stepping, the light reflecting off the dirt, making it easier to see where you're going, because seeing out there is pretty tough. There was no moonlight this night, and you couldn't really tell with anything the way it was shining. But occasionally, it seemed as if a beam of bright starlight would peek through a hole in the canopy right above, just making a brief enough appearance before disappearing behind some clouds drifting overhead. My mind began to wander, thinking about work and family. And all of a sudden, I think my sixth sense started working overtime. I jumped out of my skin, 
it felt as if somebody had grabbed me by the hair with their hand. Then this jolt of electricity ran through my entire body, as if I had gotten shot. I felt extremely nauseated, like I had to vomit. I decided to turn back. I could tell there was just something very wrong. I think there are some kind of demonic entities that feed off human fear that rotate around these woods. That's why they only come out at night. I worked for the National Park Services in Idaho, specifically craters in the Moon National Monument and Preserve. The preserve is incredibly remote. It's about two hours from a town with only one store that's accessible by dirt roads through the mountains. We have a lot of interactions with people that live out there. They can't get to anything else easily. I joke that it feels like we're running a small city at times due to all the programs that we've got going on simultaneously. So, while working up there, I had this experience happen twice. Once in November of 2011, and again in January of 2012. This post will be long, so bear with me. In November... Myself and a co-worker were exploring the preserve during the day in my SUV. We came across a small cave area where we decided to stop. The road here was very rough, but it allowed us to get close enough that we could hike in without too much difficulty. This cave was relatively small, maybe 7 feet tall at its tallest point, and about 15 feet wide. Rough estimates. We walked around outside of it for a short time before going inside, only briefly. The second we did, I'll never forget the feeling of dread I had when my coworker would stop dead in his tracks, staring straight ahead. He would look at me with pure terror on his face and just mutter the words, No way. I asked what was wrong, thinking something had happened to him, but he just stood there looking right at me, shaking his head no. I turned around, looking where my coworker was staring, and saw a very large beast hunched over by a large boulder, about eight feet away. We must have surprised it. When I turned around to look at it, it stood up straight in surprise. When I saw the size of the creature and what it was doing in that cave, I just about pissed my pants. It was bent over, licking the blood off a deer skull, with its back and long hairless arms ending in huge claws that were bigger than my hands. Have you ever seen Star Wars? This thing reminded me of a darn rancor, at least the way it looked. A different head and face, but the hands and claws were almost identical. And the way it held onto that skull, it makes me shudder just to think about it. The teeth looked like something but longer than fangs, with a huge mouth. Almost grayish-white skin with muscles bulging at its chest, neck, and head. I can't even think of the words to describe how scary this was, and to think it was only about ten feet away. I'll never forget that feeling. It reacted to our movements, and it started moving towards us. My coworker was shaking so bad, I had to snap him back to reality, grabbing him by the arm and pulling him out. We had no time to ask questions of what it could have been. After this thing had taken a couple of steps towards us, we were already out and far, far away. I'm not sure what this was, what it wanted, or if we had somehow stumbled upon its temporary den. Maybe it was trying to protect its kill. Who knows? I'm a park ranger, and I've been at my present job for about four years now. I would like to share with you all of my sightings of what many claim are the supposed Rougarou. I believe they exist, and I've myself seen it. The sighting I had of this creature was September of 2004. I was working the night shift at the time, patrolling one of the more popular trails. I heard the sound of heavy footfalls in the trail. So, I turned to look, shining a light over in that direction where I heard the noise. I saw a very tall, bipedal humanoid stepping out on the path behind me. I could distinctly see its silhouette as it was illuminated. It turned in response to my light shining on it, and was incredibly frightened by the sight before me. This thing looked every bit of vicious you can imagine. If there was ever a real-life werewolf, this was it. In complete paralyzation of fear, it kind of just slowly lumbered away into the darkness. I've never told anybody about this incident 
out of fear of ridicule and disbelief. But I saw it with my own eyes, and I can attest to the authenticity of this being. I had a second encounter, unfortunately. It was summer of 2009, almost five years later. I was on patrol yet again. This time, it was a sunny afternoon, midday. I was just doing my usual, but I could feel something drawing closer behind me. I turned around to look and nothing was there. Figuring I was just getting paranoid and I ignored it. Continued on the best I could. However, the feeling began to grow and intensify. I could not shake that I was being followed. I got on a call with one of my teammates about the job I was working on and I began to hear heavy breathing. I stopped the radio call, shortly looking around me to see if I could see where the breathing was coming from or who or what was making it. And it was this deep, heavy breathing, getting closer and closer. I could hear it coming up behind me, on the other side of the trail. I felt immediate danger, making a hasty decision that I had to get out of here and now. All I knew is that a large predator was stalking me, and it was going to keep pursuing me. I know a lot of people could easily write this off, but I'm telling you, there was something out there with me in the woods that day. It was not a bear. It was not a normal animal. This was something with intelligence that was coming after me. Had I not acted, I was going to be its next meal. This story goes back to 2014, and it's probably the first time I'm ever opening up about it. I have shared a few bits and pieces to a couple of friends of mine, but never the whole story in its entirety. I can't say where it happened, because I still work for the state, and I don't feel like getting fired. But, if you look on a map, it's up in the northern part of the state, about halfway between Sacramento and Tahoe. There's a huge hint for you. I was working as a campground host at one of our local state parks, living in the employee housing. I had some free time one afternoon while all the guests were at their cabins and busy, so I decided to do a little exploring. I'd been hiking in the area by myself a few times already. There were tons of trails nearby that I had not yet explored. The park was working a good size, well over 50 miles of trails crisscrossing the backcountry. Back then, I didn't own a car, so I took advantage of it. I would go out hiking every chance I could. The park I was working at had two main roads that went through it. One road came into the park from a small town just south of us and ran all the way to another small town to the north, about 10 miles away. The other road split off from the first and went up into the mountains. As far as I know, I never got that far. That's really the only way in or out of the park, so you've got to take one or two of these roads to get anywhere. The day I decided to take the road that led south from the park, it was extremely twisty and had lots of sharp turns. That was the bad thing. The good thing is it's really secluded, and there's virtually zero traffic. A lot of people don't even know these roads exist, or so it feels. The first half of the road was pretty easy hiking. The elevation stayed very constant, and just followed a small creek that was fed by several smaller lakes in the area. After a while, the road split off from the creek, turned to the east where it climbed up into a steeper canyon. The road went up to the canyon for about another two miles or so, before eventually flattening out. When it came to a larger rock quarry, the quarry was huge, about a mile and a half wide. I'd seen it plenty of times before while hiking, so as I was walking, just deep enough to where I couldn't see it anymore, it was silent except my footsteps on the gravel, and out of nowhere, I hear this primal animal scream. It did not sound like a mountain lion or coyote, or anything like that. I've heard plenty of those before and they sound different. This was more like a howl, a really deep one, but not in any way you could imagine. A real wolf's call has a deep tone to it and can be drawn out for several seconds. This was shorter, sounded higher pitched in comparison. It definitely was not an elk either. Elk calls are very distinct and only make certain noises, depending on whether they're alarmed or angry or what. This was something completely new. We don't have anything in California that sounds remotely close to what it did. I hear it get closer, still in the distance, but definitely headed my way. 
as the noise got closer, I began hearing other noises along with the howling sounds, all coming up from ahead where the road was, and I could not figure out what they were. Anyway, I kept walking while trying to just focus. I see this thing pop out on the road up ahead of me, stop, look over my direction, and quickly cross. I must say, I have never seen anything quite like it. This thing was strange. I wasn't sure what to make of it. Its features were human-like, but it was almost different in every way. The one thing that really got me was that it appeared to have no arms. It was also short, and very thin with pale gray skin. Its head seemed somewhat larger than its body. It had these large black eyes, and its face seemed kind of featureless. A flat nose with slits, and a mouth that didn't really show much. I decided after that, I probably shouldn't go any further. I had zero desire to meet whatever that thing was. I turned around, hiked back to the way I came. Even though this happened back in 2014, it's still as fresh in my mind as ever. I still have nightmares sometimes and am constantly trying to find ways to rationalize what I saw. I just don't understand how there could be something like that out there in the woods, let alone so close to town. I've tried to see if there's anything like what I saw on the internet, but have not had any luck. I still keep looking, though. I spoke to my sister about it. She thinks it's nothing more than a ghost of a hiker. Maybe if I ever find something like this on the web, that'll be what it turns out to be. I don't think it's a ghost, though. It did not resemble a ghost in any way, shape, or form. This was something that was physical, like a flesh and blood being. Any feedback would be appreciated. But if it helps at all, it looked more like an alien than it did a ghost. Alright, so my day was already off as it was. I woke up late. After another long night of drinking with some colleagues, I was just barely getting into my truck when I got the call that there were some reports of somebody suspicious in one of our more remote campgrounds. I was called to investigate a suspicious person sighting. I was only four hours into my patrol when I got there. It was about an hour before sunset, and the campsite had been closed down earlier that day, as per our policy, as the snow is coming soon, and we don't want anybody getting trapped in there without proper equipment. This was right next to the lake where I had my sighting. The lake itself is fantastic in the spring when everything is warm, and all the wildlife is all around. It's great. I just happened to be looking around at the right moment and saw movement from the lake. That's when I saw it. At first, I saw a head, but then it came into focus, and that's when I nearly fell out of my seat. What came up from the lake was not a turtle or a fish. It was no way in hell a fish. It had a massive flat snout with gills on each side of its face, and it appeared to have a long neck, as the head was directly attached to the torso, which supported four large flippers. It was truly a bizarre-looking creature, I didn't know what to think, but it startled me. I was sitting there in my truck when this thing came up, and all I could do was sit there in shock watching this thing come up out of the water. It disappeared quickly, but I just sat there totally in awe. I was not even sure how to process the fact that I had just seen this large, prehistoric, dinosaur-looking thing pop out of the water and go back under. So I called it in, basically reporting that, well, there was nothing to report. I drove away slowly and cautiously. I didn't know what that thing was, but later on after some time, I thought I realized with all the evidence of Nessie in Scotland and so many other sightings around the world, did I have my own Loch Ness Monster sighting, or is this something else entirely? I'm a ranger, and so for this story, I'll call myself Ranger J. I work in an area of one of America's most famous national parks. I graduated college with an outdoor recreation degree and then entered the park service as a seasonal employee for many years. This was before I became a full-time permanent employee. It was about 80 degrees, a clear night sky, and had just gotten done with our first training session for new seasonals at the ranger station. It was a bunch of new people, and we got the mandatory training out of the way, so we were all free to go home. Most employees live near the park, 
but there were five other people who lived as far as several miles away from the RMNP's main entrance gate that night alone. That park has one large dirt road that traverses through it. That's called the Trail Ridge Road. It's very scenic, very beautiful, and only about five miles up from the ranger station. At this time of year, there's no snow on the ground yet, so it's perfect for four-wheel drive or decent-sized trucks to come up and down. So, I took one of the guys with me, who lived in town, back to his car that he had left on Trail Ridge Road. We drove down. It was right around 9 p.m. The park was now closed, so there were no visitors around. As we pulled up to one scenic outlook, called the Forest Canyon Overlook, I noticed something moving on this hiking trail right below us. It was about 30 feet down from where we were. I had my window rolled down, and there was this horrifying, ear-shattering scream echoing off the canyon walls. The hairs on my neck stick straight up just thinking about it. This was not a human noise. I'm 100% positive after hearing it. It sounded like a mix between an ape and a large bear, and possibly a giant bird. I have never heard anything like it in my life. I don't know what the new guy who was with me thought, but he didn't say anything afterwards. As we pulled away, there were two other rangers sitting in their patrol cars about 40 feet behind us. They were facing away from us. I asked them what they thought it was. I couldn't make out any words, but one of the rangers pointed behind me towards where we saw something walking on the trail below us. So I turned my light bar off, stopped my truck, and got out with a spotlight to see if I could spot anything. By this time, the rangers had gotten out of their cars and were shining their lights with me, but couldn't see anything. I didn't know what to make of it. I was kind of freaked out at this point, so I decided to go down to where I saw something walking on the trail below us while the other rangers stayed back. I got out of my truck and started making my way down the closed road with a large 4 million candle spotlight that I carry in my truck to see at night. This way, I can see when I'm patrolling off-road. I didn't go far before I noticed something moving on this rock wall, about 30 feet up from me. I took a pic of it, and hoped that if I could zoom in on it later, I could see what it was. As I took the picture, something let out another one of those ear-shattering screams, and started moving up and down this rock wall like a monkey would swing through trees. At this point, there was nothing but sheer terror going through my mind. So, I got back to my car, stopped at one of the rangers' cars. I told the rangers that we've got a real problem here, and they lit up their spotlights while pointing out, and I saw something moving. We all scanned that area with our lights, but did not see anything move or sway in the trees or bushes nearby. After a minute or two, after a couple moments, we didn't see anything anymore. So, I got back into my truck and I showed them the picture I had taken. The ranger on the left took one look and said, That's a devil dog. I don't even know what that means after hearing that, but my thoughts were confirmed. Whatever it was, we were not looking at any ordinary animal, that's for sure. I was working when this happened. We were letting people out from a popular tourist attraction in our national park. I was busy directing traffic. It was a very busy day. I had been doing that for roughly about an hour and a half, and I saw something that's going to be hard to describe. Directing traffic in a national park is far easier when you work in the summer months. The weather is warm, which was nice. It made for reduced operations on my part. The sun at the time was low in the sky. People were trying to take photos all around, and it was getting pretty busy. Once the car had stopped for me to tell them where to go in the park, they were taking their time getting out. But then, I heard the people in the car start scrambling and yelling, and I kind of looked over in the direction where they were looking at. And off there, I saw this thing. It looked pretty tall, muscular like a man with hair that was matted and rough-looking. It appeared to have some hair on its face, but... I couldn't see it that well. It quickly disappeared. The people in the car were freaking out and I was trying to maintain my professionalism and hold it together, trying to give this poor man directions on where he was supposed to go, all while trying to ignore what I just saw along with his family in the car, who he kept screaming at to be quiet. I kind of just shrugged it off my shoulders and let it be, but 
talk about creepy 